10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2... Hey, crypto heads, it's the Goos with the Cryptic Paranormal Show. Sitting across from me, as always, is my co-host, Mr. Mr. Oh, Michael. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Heisenberg. And uh, we do have our uh, our new teammate and uh, special guest host with us tonight, Mr. Aaron Brunton. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, man. Good to have you on the show. I know you watch a lot, so thank you for that. But uh, definitely cool to have you on. Um and also, we have with us our special guests from Destination Fear. We're excited to have them on. Mr. Dakota Layden. Hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, how are hey. you doing? We have Chelsea Layden and Tanner Wiseman. How are you guys doing? Hey. Do hey. <laughs> uh, thank you guys for coming on. I just wanted to say for sure, um, definitely... Definitely one of my new new favorite shows. Um, <laughs> Destin <laughs> yeah, Destination Fear is is one of those shows. I think it. You guys are for real. I mean, uh, you're not going into these places trying to convince us these places are haunted, but more or less you're showing us what happens when they are haunted. You're like your 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 stuff is real, and uh, it's definitely something we appreciate. Yeah, you guys got me watching um, ghost hunting shows again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, man. That's definitely one of our goals is just to try to make something, you know, as relatable as possible. And, you know, we don't even consider ourselves investigators and ghost hunters. So, yeah, yeah it was pretty I'm glad you, you like that part of it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Um, it's an amazing show. And I guess well, let's start from the beginning. Everybody has their origin story. So, I, I mean, but you guys are all connected in a way. I mean, obviously, you know, you and Chelsea and, and our, our brother and sister, and you guys grew up with Tanner, if I'm correct. Is that right? Yeah. It's so like all, yeah. th all three of you guys were having experiences at the same time. Is that how you guys got into this thing? Yeah. So we, uh, the house that me and Chelsea, we had a lot of paranormal activity stuff happen when we were young. Our parents ended up blessing the house. Oh, wow. And uh, Tanner, you you know, Tanner was our best friend at the time. And so Tanner would come over every weekend and he got to see it firsthand. And yeah. we ended up setting up cameras. Me and Tanner would set up cameras in the house. Oh, wow. At the age of like 12. Yeah. And we, we did like our own. We didn't even really know what we were doing, but technically it was some sort of like a ghost hunt. Yeah. And... Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Like, what kind of, I mean, what was going on? Did you guys ever dig into the history there? Like, did anybody ever, like, pass away there? What was the story? Yeah, there was actually a history of satanic rituals on the property. There's actually newspaper clipping. They called it the Boogie Woods. Wow. And that's where we built our house. And we had people <laughs> warn us, too, about building our house there. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that'll do it. <laughs> were, the, were the warnings warranted? <laughs> I mean, right? <laughs> I mean, how what was it like growing up with that? I mean, that's got to be tough, right? I mean, when did you get? When did this start for you guys? I think it like really sparked our interest, just like in things that we couldn't explain. Uh -huh. um, like growing up with it and being exposed to it at such a young age, you know, you have so many questions and um, just you know, it's it's kind of uh, scary, but also there's 
an adrenaline rush to it too. Yeah. So we kind of took all of our experiences that we shared together and we actually like continued to like feed that hobby growing up and we actually take what we experienced when we were younger and we'd you know bring that outside of our home and we'd go to like abandon the um like haunted locations together and that's it's literally like it's something that we like had as a common hobby like with all of us growing up for our whole lives so it's just kind of cool to see how it kind of came to fruition later on in life yeah it's kind of it's very interesting yeah that's i mean i I grew up in a house kind of the same thing, but I mean, it was it was far a far cry from any kind of satanic ritual, <laughs> you know, property. That that's crazy to me. You know, I, we had there was death in our in our in our family or the house, house. that we grew up in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the the children of the the people before us passed away in a car accident, and I think their spirits were still lingering around. That's I mean, kind of the same thing. It was having weird experiences around our house, and my brother was definitely affected, and we kind of did. You kind of dealt with it our own different ways. I started reading books about you know hauntings and stuff like that, and he was kind of more into the music part. And he was uh, he started finding all these EVPs on the internet, you know, because <laughs> the internet had just started really back then. <laughs> you could find anything. Wow. <laughs> you could find anything on the internet, and he started like morphing these EVPs into. He was into techno music. He still is actually some great stuff, but um, he started putting it into his techno music. But I mean, it was. Growing up with that is rough. He's putting EVPs into his technique. Tech? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's a like, that's a fancy and, way. Yeah, yeah, I know. It was like <laughs> repeating it and like dubstepping it, and it was pretty sweet. <laughs> wow. But um, <laughs> so how did the show like the show? Where did the show idea come from? I mean, obviously, it came from what you guys dealt with as kids. But like, I mean, did was there? Did you do anything? I mean, you had an indie project before Destination Fear came about. Yeah, I mean, so when we were younger, uh, like after all that stuff happened growing up, we we had we kind of formed a hobby out of like urban exploring and going to abandoned places and creepy places, and it wasn't uh, it wasn't anything like we ever saw ourselves doing so like like we're doing now, but it was it was a lot of fun and we had a blast. And it wasn't until about like four four and a half years ago where I kind of had this idea, I'm like, what if we do a road trip and and everyone sleeps alone and I'm the only one who knows where we're going and like it, it was just that was kind of the original idea it was just inspired from us urban exploring and right. uh, we did that we shot that and it was a documentary called Trail to Terror uh-huh. and uh, it's the same exact concept as Destination Fear just a new name now and uh, yeah I mean it, it, that was kind of the thrill it was more like man like we kind of hit every place in Minnesota yeah I'd love to go see other places in other states <clears throat> And we created this road trip. That's I like the whole concept of that. Yeah, I like the concept <laughs> that nobody knows but you. Yes, that's that's like one of my. I want to know, know how Tanner and Chelsea feel about that. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, yeah, it's definitely not my favorite part of the concept. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're in the dark the whole time. Yeah. Uh, no, but for real, I think it is a fun little twist that puts uh, that put on our show. Yeah. Um, having you know me and Chelsea not knowing anything about where we're going. I mean, there's times where we're on the highway uh, in the RV, and you just don't even know what direction you're going, what state you're leaving, what state you're entering. Um, you cross <laughs> a couple a couple state lines sometimes. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you, it's warm weather when it used to be a little bit cold out. <laughs> um, but. You know, knowing not knowing the places, um, it's almost kind of a, there's a little bit of a benefit to it too because Dakota he knows everything and he has to wrap his mind around um, all this what he's getting himself into and right. he and Kelsey have right. the benefit of you know having peace of mind for the time being. Yeah, it's true. You don't have to yeah. overthink of what you're um, what you're coming into. Kind of. Yeah, it's, it's kind like- of. Okay. Sorry. Just, no, no, <laughs> no, I was just going to say the same thing, basically. <laughs> I was just going to say, I would be scared to see where you guys pick. I don't want you guys to pick. This. I think you guys have, like, <laughs> you guys don't want to be What were you going to say, though, Chelsea? Oh, I was just going to say the same thing as Tanner. Like, it's a blessing and a curse to know where we're going. There's a part of the road trip that's beautiful. We're driving through some really gorgeous places. Yeah. And I think if I knew where we were actually going, I wouldn't be able to enjoy the actual road trip <laughs> part. Yeah. So I'm actually totally fine not knowing where we're going, <laughs> to be honest with you. 
Yeah, I think I'd like that too. I, from that one, yeah, from now on, don't tell me where we're going. Okay. <laughs> but you drive. I mean, oh, you're the one true. who drives usually. I'll, I'll, drive, I'll, I'll drive blindfolded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, we're there's go a separate that day. I got to tell you guys, we've been to a couple places in West Virginia. I didn't think we we're going to make it. In That's the first true. Place. Oh, my God. Those mountains are crazy. <laughs> but um, <laughs> thus far, like, I, I am caught up pretty much so far through the show. I, I know you probably don't want to give out too much as far as the future. But like thus far, what has been as far as what has aired? What has been probably the most intense location for each of you guys? Uh, for me, I will say I will just give some pieces because the one that's airing this Saturday, yeah, at that mountain penitentiary, oh. that place affected me the most out of anywhere I've ever been, and I don't think I'll ever have something so profound happen again. Mount and then, yeah. There is the one after that, our ninth episode, which is not this week, but next week, where one of our buddies, Alex, who's with us, he caught something on camera that I have never expected to catch on camera. Yeah. And it's still kind of making us all scratch our heads and wonder Oh yeah, what wow. the heck's actually going on. But that's <laughs> me. What about you guys? Um, I'd say as a spectator, that's my favorite from, like, actually like what from a watching standpoint um but my favorite actual location had to have been last week um uh-huh. statler hotel yeah just because it was such a big building and it was just like 18 floors almost a million square feet oh wow something basically wow. that i never thought i'd ever be able to do and yeah that's my sleeping arrangement being on the 18th floor was <laughs> something i don't think I could actually do again. <laughs> I can imagine. Don't sell yourself short. <laughs> yeah, there's no. You can do it, Chelsea. Yeah, I would say my location would be a uh, Sweet Spring Sanitarium. Uh, I was going to say, Green. yeah. Um, it just was the weirdest thing I've ever been a part of. Um, and it's like the first time I've heard, you know, an audible noise that real that loud and that, you know, prominent in your face and the fact that it kept going and reoccurred multiple yeah. times and it, it was I don't even know how to explain it it's one of those things that is just going to be an open question mark in my head forever I think yeah that that so far for me as, as a spectator besides the fact that I'm biased because I we go to Madison Seminary yep. all the time which we're going to talk about we have to yeah <laughs> oh yeah I mean we're we're part that of the mad amazing. crew and uh <laughs> But that the one Tanner was talking about, I can never get the name right. What was it, Tanner again? The Sweet Springs uh, Sweet Asylum? Sweet Springs Sanitarium. Okay. That was an intense location, like, just watching it. Like, seeing you go through that flight or f- the, the fight or flight uh, method. I was just like, I wanted to go. I never heard of the place, to be honest with you. I've yeah, never heard of this the for place. 15, 20 years now. Yeah. And, uh, right. and that was the best part is, you know, uh, Dakota, I mean, He's done so much research, and he has this huge list yeah. of just multiple locations all over the country. Yeah. And, I mean, he just picked this crazy, you know, <laughs> hidden gem, I'd say, um, of a location. Yeah. Cause, um, it's funny, because when we first, me and Chelsea first heard of Sweet Spring Sanitarium, you kind of uh. have to giggle because of the name. It seems so, <laughs> I mean, lack of a better word, sweet. Yeah, right. And, um, <laughs> you go, and when we went to this place, like, it just... You know, we felt off the second we got there. The history alone is just unbelievable, and it ties down to Thomas Jefferson. Like, so that's even a cool little factoid. But yeah, the location itself and what happened that night was just—I uh, think kind of shook us to our core. Yeah. And it was only night three, and we had multiple to go. Oh, right. Boy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that episode. I, you know what? I watch it with my kids. I'm going to be honest. My daughters love the show. <laughs> And they have like oh, a running. Awesome. <laughs> they actually have a running tally of who screams the most. <laughs> <laughs> so let me guess. Who, oh, you guys, you guys scream, or we're tallying how much we. Scream. They're they're tallying how much you guys scream in reaction to some of the stuff you guys are going through. Well, they, they all know that Ray oh, screams all the time. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Chelsea, you may take the lead for the first half of the season, but I think yeah. that. Uh, Hmm. Alex gives you a run for your money again. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah, I noticed Alex is um, you know, I, Alex is a, an important part of your crew, and you know, he was he's starting to be more of a main main like crew member, and it's it's fun watching him interact as well, and like seeing what he's going through. 
Um, it's cool seeing yeah. him be a part of the crew, and uh, we'll have to get him on sometime. But yeah, he, he's always on. He's uh, he had some things coming up. That's, I'm so glad Alex is a part of this and with us because if he wasn't, he we would not we would not have captured what I consider probably our best capture ever, which is I mean I've ever been a part of ever. Yeah, and it, it was all Alex. He caught something on camera coming up that just is so incredible. Oh, I can't wait. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> and you said it was Moundsville Sem- or Moundsville uh, Penitentiary, correct? Moundsville's where I was real oh. personally affected. That, okay. was, uh, that was episode eight. That's coming gotcha. up this better. But the one two weeks from now is okay. called the Fairfield County Infirmary Ooh, in, right. in Ohio as well. Uh-huh. And, uh, you guys are going to make a lot of... Biggest, you guys are going to make a lot of trips you. to Ohio. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> I no, apologize. It's totally fine. <laughs> no, go, I'm sorry. Go ahead with your story. I apologize. The Fairfield... Uh, what was it again? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, no. That's... It's, you're totally fine, man. It was a uh, Fairfield County Infirmary, I think, is in it's in Ohio. Okay, that, that's the one where Alex had. It's just so mm. insane. It's our ninth episode, and yeah, I don't want to give anything away, but don't. like, oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll say this: it's like Coulter, guys. There's some oh. real movement, mm. real craziness oh. on camera. That sounds amazing. Amazing. I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's also <laughs> cool. Too. <laughs> it's also really cool seeing you guys go to some places that we've been to. Yep. And we go to quite a bit. I've been to Moundsville. We were talking about Moundsville. I've been there quite a few times. And I've been there once. He's been there once. And uh, it's been, it was in a, wow, I had a couple jaw dropping things. Like, I could not explain for the life of me happened there. But one of your episodes was uh, at pretty much our home away from home. I call it my paranormal house. Yep. yep. <laughs> Madison Seminary. That was, uh, I mean, we're being biased. It's probably our favorite episode so yep. far. <laughs> but seeing you guys, <laughs> seeing you guys doing what you do in our neck of the woods, you know, in, in our house, uh, that was pretty amazing. And you guys did an excellent job. But how how did you guys feel about the whole thing overall? I mean, pretty amazing place, wasn't it? Oh my gosh! Yeah, I love Madison. <laughs> I love the people who run yeah. the Madison. Oh yeah, and just everything about it. It's beautiful. Yeah. What um, I gotta say that that shadow outside of the basement when yes. Chelsea was sleeping. Yes, yes, yes. I for the life of me can't w- explain that one away. That I no. mean, <laughs> so weird. That was so crazy. You, I thought it was just my mind playing jokes on me. So yeah. I almost didn't even like say anything. So I'm like, there's no way I saw mm-hmm. that. Yeah, and that's all. I just was like, oh my gosh! Like when I actually saw the footage, I'm like. That's messed up. That's so scary. <laughs> I was going to say, if you guys have an explanation, I'd love to hear it because it would help us get to sleep faster. <laughs> <laughs> the whole place is haunted. That's my explanation. Uh, yeah, the, the grounds are haunted, and I'm not surprised, honestly, that you guys were able to catch something on the outside. Because to me, it looked like it was right outside the window. Yeah. Right? Um, it wasn't something on the inside, but I can tell you from personal experience, when, especially when Adam... Am I still on? Yeah, you're still okay. on. Okay. Do you guys still hear me? <laughs> okay. All right. I don't, just some, something with the sound went weird. All right. Um. So, yeah, dealing with Madison, especially when Adam first bought the place. We had been investigating there for years before Adam. Yeah. And, uh, you know, once Adam bought the place and started making it beautiful again and restoring it to its glory, um, we were doing a lot of volunteering work and... Uh, Help, you know, helping with security. Yeah, a little. <laughs> helping. That's where where uh, Mike got the uh, the nickname Heisenberg <laughs> for his his hazmat suit outside. Yeah, I had to wear the hazmat suit outside for mold abatement in case any authorities came. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's awesome. But we'd just be sitting outside, and you know, you know, the seldom visitor would come up, you know, for an event or whatever, and I'd just be sitting out front, and I would, I swear to God, there are people having conversations. I heard foot, like foot, like footsteps, footsteps coming towards me, like full on. Con- you know, being the security guy at the time, you know, I was up and like looking around. I got my flashlight. I'm running around chasing this stuff, and there's nothing to be found. So, yeah, and actually, you know, right, wow. right where you guys, you know, that window out towards after in the laundry room. Um, I was walk. That's where that's where Adam put me. He put me in the back. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So I was walking like back and forth down that you know the back on the driveway and i got like a really loud like hey. like it said hey that actually made me stop 
and turned around and I was like, oh man, I got to walk back there and see if there's anybody <laughs> standing there. <laughs> but, yeah, but it That's was loud. So creepy. Yeah, it was loud. Like it was. <laughs> I mean, one of the crazy things about this road trip is like, you know, Chelsea walking me since she saw something walk by her window. I, we go like pick her up in the morning. We go like wake her up, and she's like, "I swear I saw a person. I swear I saw a person." <laughs> and, like that's where we left off with it. We we didn't put it on the computer. Like we just the thing with this road trip is we're like constantly on the run and moving. And it's like we get picked up in the morning. We have like a half a day transition until we're on to the next episode, the yeah. next location. And so like it's just so crazy to me. Like we didn't even know till afterwards when we got back to start like ed- editing that we actually caught something so creepy there with the shadow figure looked like a shadow yeah. figure it didn't look like a person right and uh like i don't know just that to me is so creepy i'm glad we didn't find out till afterwards what we actually <laughs> caught on camera yeah my first thought when i <laughs> yeah me too my first thought when i saw it was like finally there's a camera pointed at the right way yeah <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> yep oh yeah a typical example is at madison of course we were up in the asylum and uh we were kind of uh, reenacting like what they would go through. Like we were being like a bit of a, a jerk, um, telling people to get in their rooms, be quiet. Yeah, it wasn't really provoking per se. We don't we don't, we don't like doing that, but you know, just reenacting yeah. what it might have been like, just to see if we can get some kind of response. And uh, we went down to that that freaking corner room there, or like we call it Crazy Town, like right in the corner there in the the, the weirdest hallway in the world. <laughs> and I'm yeah, like, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. nope. I'm like, all right, you guys, we're going to solid. We're calling it solitary because back then, before Adam bought it, that's what they called it. They called it the solitary room, where they would take you know wow. asylum patients and put them away and like lock them back in that little vestibule area in the back corner. Um, coming on, you're, you're going into solitary. Shut the door behind you, and I walked in. Everybody was standing. Did you walk into my? No, I saw the. I actually yeah, he saw was on the, the door outside. shut. <laughs> and lo and behold, the door shut like somebody just grabbed the thing and like actually like it shut all the way. Yeah, I was like screaming. Like, you heard the click. Wow. <laughs> I was like, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> and we're like, all right, we caught this on camera, right? And nope. I walked out and the camera's pointing the opposite way down the hallway. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> 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 That's like the worst. That's, that's happened too many times to count for us, too. Yeah. 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 So you guys. That's awesome, though. <laughs> I love that music box thing yeah. you guys have. Oh yeah, yeah, that was amazing. That was, cool. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh yeah. That's well, bigger. the music box we broke out every single night. It's just uh, it wasn't until Madison that it actually worked yeah. the first time, and so it was like really for me that like that's something no one really even knows. But like for me, that made me believe it even more. Where I was like, wow, we used this at all the four previous locations and yeah. didn't get anything, and then at Madison Seminary in Sarah's room, mm-hmm. we uh-huh. get it to go off. So creepy. It was great that you guys oh, were up on the fourth was floor. So what was that, Tanner? Yeah, the fact that it was like so responsive was so crazy too. Like if you asked it questions and it would turn off, it would turn back on, and then once we went to the fourth floor, it started going off again. Like it just made no sense. <laughs> so creepy. Yeah. It makes like the freakiest noise ever. I literally can't handle that one. Like. Oh yeah. It's like. I gotta say, my you daughter's. You feel like you're in like a bad movie, like a, yeah. like a yep. horror movie, and then you just add that to it. Like, and now it's really happening. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. Once the music starts, I'm out. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's why I don't yeah, watch don't scary movies. At all. I, d- I definitely would have <laughs> added. Sc- yeah, I would definitely add a scream to my my count. Yeah, I probably were, would too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about. I mean, you guys, you guys are kind of introducing a little bit here and there. We're talking about the music box. You guys are using the technology, um, you know, just kind of, you you guys don't really, it's kind of nice because you guys don't focus on the use of the technology that you're bringing in. It's just kind of, it's it's just kind of there. It's like a supporting character. (laughs) You guys have it sitting next to you while you're experiencing what you're already experiencing. And then you're using the technology almost as like you should be as a validation of your experience. Yes instead of the experience of it in of itself but so far yeah. what 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 has what's your favorite piece of technology that you guys use when you go into these places well i, I can start uh, i mean i personally really like the ovulus yeah i think that thing uh i just like the fact that it like i have a sometimes i have a bad ear so like when it comes to a digital recorder like i can't oh. really I, I won't be able to pick up on it as well, but gotcha. like the ovulus, it's just blatant in your face. It says the word, and 
don't yeah. know, that always gives me a bone chill right down the spine when I hear something or says something that's relevant. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. What about you, Dakota? I mean, I, I love the ovulus. I love I love all of it. I think um, I think my favorite in terms of just like okay, this is actually happening. Our like <laughs> the, the stuff that picks up electromagnetic energy. Like yeah. this is like that that cannot not happen if like the REM pods, even the the what's it, uh, even the music box. Like I love that. And then um, I don't know. I, I think my favorite tool, though, just personally, is the digital recorder because. Yeah. It's it's right. I don't know. Like you're recording on something, and it, it shouldn't. You shouldn't hear a voice. It's like I can hear a voice when I record it, and it's just so creepy. <laughs> what were you saying, Tanner? I was just agreeing with him. I think the digital recorder is super creepy because you'll hear a voice, and it's not supposed to say anything back to you. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, oh. Yeah, but it's the best. So crazy. <laughs> I, can I say, love the ovulus. Yeah. Ovulus takes the cake for me. I freaking love that thing. I hate love. It's a love hate. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. like, it like vocalizes actual uh-huh. words, and yeah. I think that like it makes it so much more real. But I also like hate it because it's like really, really re- relevant. Like a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, that so, gets. That's kind of where I'm at with yeah. that. <laughs> I think for me, like that that piece of equipment, though the, the actual electronic voice, yeah, that it could be just most. as creepy, even if it's not a, like a relevant answer. Just but, hearing that like robotic but. voice coming back at you, <laughs> <laughs> it's like something. It's just that extra level. Yeah, right. Exactly. Like, nice, pleasing I mean, voice. Yeah. Like good night. Yeah, like, like Siri. Or, <laughs> <laughs> like Siri or something. <laughs> good night. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's a demon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad that's not one of the words it can say. It's a demon. No, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Oh, so the office won't. That's not in the word bank. I don't think demon is. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you'll find I out eventually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hope we don't find out. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah, it says great. demon. That's no. like that's not in the instruction book. <laughs> <laughs> I will say if uh, if we get another season and this keeps going, uh, I think one thing we're going to try to do is like the thermal camera. I want to yeah. bring a thermal. We always are hearing stories about temperature change, and mm-hmm. I just feel like you know why not bring a thermal camera? And we're definitely on the search right now. If we're going to yeah. keep looking, if we get this another go, I think we're going to bring a few more new tools. Cool. I hope I I think I'm in a good group here thinking that we hope that uh, you guys get another shot, another season. I have a good feeling they're going. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're yeah. gonna get another one. I would say, like I said, that show. I mean, that makes me want to watch those shows again, or at least theirs. Yeah, I just. That's we, awesome. Yeah, because you you guys, <laughs> what you guys are doing. I mean, basically, you're you're kind of like, for me, it's like a like a time machine. It's like going back in time to the reason I started doing this in mm-hmm. the first place. Is like just testing. That's so cool. Yeah, because like like you guys, you know, I grew up in a house where that I, you know, had creepy ass shit going on and I could not figure it out, and you know, so eventually I'm like, oh, I didn't even know you could do this. I didn't know you could go out to these places and like just see what happens. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, we started doing it and like, holy shit, it's it's crazy. And um, you know, but then as a group we kind of get more into like you know we we have a certain way we go about residentials you know we go in very level headed you know we're there to you know help the family and, and find real reasons so you know eventually along the way you start taking things so seriously we kind of lose that yeah then we go to initial... places like madison i'm like it's an amusement park yeah <laughs> <laughs> the paranormal amusement park <laughs> but i mean you guys yeah, that's definitely something we don't want to lose is yeah. that we do have some people who some people who comment and critique the show who are more into the paranormal and have been studying it for a long time who are like mad that we're scared all the time and like because we're just scared it's like yeah well you know i i know like i've worked with ghost adventures for a long time and like uh-huh. even they get scared like everyone still gets scared and there's nothing oh, yeah. wrong with showing fear no and they no. actually say that fear like perpetuates activity sometimes oh absolutely i totally agree with that <laughs> i totally agree but um I got every, we're on Facebook and uh, a lot of people also chiming in hoping that there's a, a season two. Yeah, so. and Addy wants to know something about Bally Candles. Addy? Yeah. Addy from the back room? Yep. 
<laughs> she said she had a question for Sh Chelsea, and then she said something about when will there be more Bally Spa candles? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a I'm rough. I'm having a hard time hearing. I think okay. You guys are fading out on me. Oh no. <laughs> Addie Gaddis um, from Madison was one. Oh, yeah, was wondering if was was asking towards Chelsea, I guess. So Bally Spa candles. Something she's running out of Bally Spa <laughs> candles. <laughs> I don't know what that reference <laughs> refers to, but. <laughs> yeah, <neither do> I. <laughs> I probably said it wrong. <laughs> yeah. So everybody listening in on Facebook, uh, watching the watching the show. If you guys have any questions for. Dakota, Tanner, or Chelsea, definitely chime in. Let us know. We'll we'll get it out to them for sure. Mm hmm. Addie wants to know where my sunglasses are. I don't wear them anymore. I can I can I finally got enough um, confidence that I don't have to hide behind them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you said we're coming up on uh, what episode? How many episodes are in this first season? Ah, uh, so we we have ten episodes of first season. Okay. Episode eight is airing on Saturday, and uh, yeah, I think honestly these last three are probably both in my all three of them are in my top four favorites. Yeah, so saving the best for last. Huh? <laughs> it's a solid ending, and uh, it's just cool. And I, I also yeah, I just I really hope we get to do this again. Cause yeah, yeah, exactly. I've been, <laughs> I've been itching lately. Been itching to go out again. Oh, yeah. yeah, I can imagine. How long has it been since you guys actually were at a location doing what you do? Uh, it, it was, this was in, like, summer, beginning of summer, so... Yeah. Yeah, it's been, like, probably five, Double six month. months. Yeah. Wow. So you guys on... So crazy. Yeah, so you guys are basically on the road doing conventions and, you know, the, that circuit now, huh? Oh, well, I'm actually at a, a hockey game, so I'm not oh. a cool, like, <laughs> nice. uh, an event. <laughs> but, uh, we've been doing this, you know? one vacation. I mean, Dakota edits the entire show, so oh, wow. he did not have any any time to do anything. So he finally has four days of a break, and uh, he's getting some home love. Yes, I'm back in Minnesota right now, <laughs> taking a little break. Oh, good for you, man. You guys deserve it because you guys have been doing an excellent job. All right, I got a couple of questions. Kind of. Yeah, we got a couple of questions here. Would you guys ever investigate a whole town like Gettysburg? Oh, Gettysburg would be crazy. <laughs> I mean, I'm totally down. We've always said to each other, like, how cool would it be to find, like, if I could find, like, a state, like an actual town where yeah. there's more than just, like, one or two spots. And it's like all of us have to get our own building for the night. It's oh, like that draw out of cool. the hat right away. Yeah. But that'd be really cool to take on a town, for sure. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I tell you what. I actually know of a guy <laughs> who has been um, promoting an area uh, in northeast or northwestern Ohio, uh, Bryan, Ohio. He's actually got access to, I think he said like five or six different buildings. Oh, really? In the oh, town wow. itself. And he's been having some... Um, He's been having paranormal events there. I guess the guys from uh, the the Texas Wraith Chasers have been there a few times for some events. So maybe uh, reach out to him. I can get give you guys some contact information. But yeah, I would love that. Yeah, that'd be that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, if each of you guys get your own building, that would be pretty sweet because you guys be <laughs> you guys be like a block right. away from each other. <laughs> There's no running like to check up on setup. each other. <laughs> yeah. And then. Would you guys? Oh, man. Would you guys investigate Al Alcatraz? Well, who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, who wouldn't? Yeah, that'd be so cool. That'd be a dream. Yes. That would be awesome. That would be. I would love that. Yeah, that's always been on one of the top five bucket list. Yeah, places. just just the remote remoteness of it. I mean, like if they left you on the island, yeah, you're stuck. Yeah, I mean it's a freaking island. Right. <laughs> oh my gosh. That one would take... I think I might need a little prep for that one, though. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys know if you're ever going on a, a boat trip across the bay, they they probably know where uh, Dakota's taking you then. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> yeah. Like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, are we getting on a boat? Yeah. <laughs> where are we going? It's a pleasure cruise. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome That'd be a rock. great finale. <laughs> Welcome to the Rock. <laughs> okay, I got another. Anyway. <laughs> For... Don't give Dakota any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys are giving me some great ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I got a question for Dakota. Um, did your time? This is from Burgundy K Brown. 
Did your time on Ghost Adventures help prepare you in any way for this road trip? I mean, yeah. Uh, uh, I think the coolest part was that they use gear, and I never had used gear up until meeting them. And so I got to learn for two years, you know, what gear to use, how it works. And, you know, I, I got to pretty much study them for a full two years straight. I was with those guys all day, every day. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, it definitely helped. Uh, I feel... I feel like you can't really prepare for this type of road trip, though, where you're going from one location to the next to the next to the next, and there's no break, and that's almost like something you need to train for at the gym. Like, you need to actually, like, physically get in shape for this. Right. And, uh, so, yeah, they definitely, I I learned a lot from those guys, and as much as you possibly can, I feel like. This still took us, I feel like we're never going to get used to this, though. Even if we did 10 more of these trips, like, we're never going to get used to the craziness, the sleep deprivation and just the constant like darkness and scary element of the road trip yeah that could take it that could take a toll on you a bit yeah. yeah actually one of the questions one of the fans was uh asking is did you guys ever actually sleep uh, no. Heck no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no i didn't even lay down yeah <laughs> oh yeah that's right <laughs> That was uh, that was another yeah. th- that was another tally. I think my girls were were how many times is Tanner going to stand up and walk around <laughs> and look for the yeah. The it'll only like it'll only get worse too. Like I just feel like <laughs> we might as well call like call it seclusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I got another. Yeah, I don't understand. I, I just never understood why. Like it's just the scariest thing being all by yourself and. I can never get myself to zip myself in the in the sleeping bag because I'm just thinking of all the scary movies in my head going, all right, this is, I'm now I'm packaging myself for the killer. Yeah. yeah, I don't do that. I do the opposite. I just, like, wrap myself up, and if it happens, it happens. If I die, you get your you get your little <laughs> you get your little protective cocoon like nobody can touch you because you're in your little uh, sleeping bag. It's nobody like, can get me. It's like you can't put yep. your hand over the side of the bed. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> can't let anything dangle over the side. It'll get you. Yep. <laughs> um, somebody said they wanted Alex for Christmas. <laughs> the first question actually was, "What did you guys ask for Christmas season two? And then somebody mentioned that. <laughs> Somebody mentioned they wanted Alex it. for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Just had to throw that out there. <laughs> ask for season two for Christmas. It's almost like, a, do you want to do this again? Like, do I ask for this? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> this might drive me crazy. <laughs> but definitely, season two would be amazing. That'd be the biggest blessing of the year if we could do that. Here's a, here's a good question. And, uh, what's that? Have any of you had any side effects from any of the places you have investigated? That's from Davina and McKean. That's a good question. Yeah. Any oh, well, I'm going to answer this, and then I actually do have to get going. I'm really sorry. Okay. My phone's, like, dead. And I'm at the oh, no problem. Game. It's all weird. Mm-hmm. But I do, I will say that I had nightmares for a long time after the road trip, and I still do. And I don't know if that's because I edited the show and that it just wore off on me, and I'm just seeing too much of the footage all the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I have nightmares all the time, and it's always me and Chelsea and Tanner and Alex at a different building every time, but it's like the same reoccurring dream where it's like just a dark, evil something following us around and, yeah. and like trying to like hurt us. And wow. uh, yeah, so I don't know. That's probably. <laughs> It's got to be something. That's just your fan club. Why did we ask that question? I didn't know that. I know. (laughs) Maybe that wasn't a great question. (laughs) That's a good question. That was scary. Well, I'm going to get going, but thank you guys so much for having me on, and feel free to keep picking Chelsea and Tanner's brains. All right. We'll We'll get something cooked up for Dakota. How about that? Yeah, we'll get you guys a secret location. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks for being on, man. I appreciate it. It was awesome. Thank you guys so much. Yep. Good luck with everything. Bye. See you later. Bye. 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 So, what about the 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 two of you guys? Have you guys ever had any like residual, you know, anything happen to you or like stick with you after one of these places? Attachments. Attachments. Anything like that? Well, so I decided it. Yep. Oh, you go first. You go. No, you got it. <laughs> I decided it would be a really good idea to um, take a rock from every location. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> and um, I just like wanted to like keep something like from every location because it's like a once in a lifetime experience. 
And half the people were like, that's awesome. And half of other people are like, that's crazy. <laughs> so I personally don't think I brought anything home, but my roommates are like convinced that our house is haunted now. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we bring, I, I mean, we used to bring home from, from Madison all the time. Yeah, Madison was a good place to bring stuff home from. That's my demographic, though. Dead old ladies. Yeah. <laughs> He's always got some dead old girlfriend he takes home with him. From... <laughs> what about you, Tanner? Yeah, so funny. <laughs> uh, for, for me, I'd say uh, four years ago when we did the, uh, the documentary, uh, Trail to Terror, um, that was like my big first kind of jump into this. And that's when I was just getting a bunch of nightmares. You know, I'd have a, a, a reoccurring nightmare where... You know, we are in a location uh-huh. trying to get out of the location. We find the exit, but once you turn the knob of the exit and opened up the door, it was just the main entrance of the next building, and it was just like this, like long maze of yeah. a big scary building that would always just open up into a new scary building. Oh no! And that was the reoccurring dream yeah. for months, and months, and you know, coming back. Um, luckily, I would say that we did that uh, five. Uh, the documentary where it was five locations in a row because I don't think if, if we did that we'd be pretty much too prepared to do the ten yeah yeah oh yeah so yeah that was the one thing that happened to me is just you know reoccurring nightmares yeah. and once we got the destination here and did these ones it was kind of like alright I've been here before but like it, I mean there's nothing you can do to prepare yourself to be not scared oh no, no. yeah no but and I think just, like, the idea of, like, trying to sleep in these locations and, like, every noise that you hear while you're in these locations is, like, like just completely frightening because you don't know what it is. And so, like, a day after when you finally are home and in your own bed and you hear, like, your roommate walking around or, like, yeah. you hear, like, a door open, like, you forget for that, like, small moment that you're not in the location anymore. Oh, and yeah. I literally woke up and, like, like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> but I realized yeah. I'm, like, in my home. Like, yeah. that's embarrassing. So, I got a question from Brenda Porta for uh, Chelsea. Um, which location challenged you the most? Oh, gosh, that's a weighted question. <laughs> um, How do you mean challenge exactly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, for starters, this is something that's really outside my comfort zone. Um when we did this growing up, it was something that we did for fun. We did it as a group. It was more like you kind of, you know, you never were alone when we used to do it. And I love that. I love being scared. But when Dakota started adding all these elements to it, you know, like, <laughs> we're going to, quote, sleep, not really sleep alone. We're going to um, do walkthroughs alone. P.S. I think those are way scarier than sleeping alone yes um, yeah. I just, yeah. it just became way outside my comfort zone so i would say if i had to pick one location that was the absolute scariest for me i think it had to have been um the statler hotel just because of oh, wow. how far away i was from the next person yeah like i only could walk e tanner and he was tanner you like seven floors below me or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was on the 11th and you were on the 18th. Wow. Yeah. Like, so, I that, yes, I felt so, so, like, uncomfortable at the Statler Hotel. All right. How about, has there ever been a location that you regretted going to? Oh, oh good question. <laughs> um, geez, I would say, um, you know, Oh, oh, here's a good one. Uh, in the documentary, um, we went to a place called Hillview Manor. Yep, I've been and, there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it is, it's in Pennsylvania, almost in Ohio. Yep. Uh, New, in Newcastle. Newcastle. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, uh, it's just, you know, it's a crazy cool building. And that was one of the places we went in the documentary. But um, like Chelsea said, um, we did a lot of group walking around during that time we didn't do as many challenges as we're doing on the tv show and we uh we're all in a group on the second floor in room 202 and we heard like burying a- across the wall and on the ceiling and we thought it was the third something on the third level but 
needless to say, like, there's no third level above room 202, so we couldn't figure out what it was. And as we're, like, questioning everything, all of a sudden we hear um, a woman scream, uh, like a moaning scream, and we don't, you know, there's no explanation for that. We're the only four people in the building, and, you know, it, it's when me and Chelsea looked at each other and we're like, oh, my gosh, like, like this stuff is, like, the real deal. Like, this is scary. Like, and we actually, uh, that night, decided not to do sleeping alone, but to sleep in twos because we were just so shook. And, you know, if I could pick not to go back there, I would pick not to go back there. Right. I had the kind of the same experience there. We were in on the second floor. We heard something, and I was like, oh, it's just another part of the group is on the third floor yeah and then i was talking to somebody they're like there's no third floor on that side of the building i was like okay yeah <laughs> exactly you go, no, okay well what's going on then <laughs> yeah 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 that actually that had, freaky that had that happened to me too when i, I did a i did a little uh, fundraiser where i just broadcasted myself and people just donated money i was i did a solo investigation at a place in southern ohio called the bell nursing home I just was in the location and locked down by myself all night. And uh, there was there was a second floor, but where I was, like, in the hospital wing part, there's no second floor. Mm-hmm. And I swear to God, I would be sitting there, and I'd hear footsteps. And you can't tell me they were animals, because there wasn't, different, different there wasn't like, little claws scurrying, you know, that, that sound or a little scratchy exactly. sound. Exactly. This was, like, thump, thump, like somebody with heavy boots just walking around. I'm like, oh, my God. So, you know, I had to... Dad. So creepy. <laughs> um, somebody asked to hold on one second. Oh, I got, as far as destination fear is concerned, we asked uh, to piggyback off of asking Chelsea what the most challenging location for her was during this this first season. I got Tanner. That goes out to you too. Um, this question is is which, the same question we had for Chelsea is for you, Tanner. Uh, which challenged you which, the most? Which location challenged you the most? End of season. Um, you know, I could say I could say the Sweet Springs one again. I yeah. mean, that one, you know, kind of rattled my core, and it was such an early <laughs> on episode that, you know, it kind of put the realism in your head about, you know, okay, we got a couple more to go, and it's it's getting it's going to get pretty serious. Um, but you know, I would say, you know, this one that's coming out this uh, episode. Uh, this week, uh, Moundsville, you know, it is one of those ones where I don't want to give too much away. Right. Um, but it was challenging the whole way through. And normally the, it gets the most challenging uh, and gets the most intense when we're all separated from sleeping. But, uh-huh. you know, something happened in this episode, or at the location, rather, that happened to us during a group, and it happened to just one of us. And uh, we're all there, and it happened right in front of our eyes, and we don't know how to explain it. And I think that one was probably the most challenging because, you know, I always like to try to find an answer, like a logical answer, of how something happened. And for the life of me, I couldn't figure it out the whole entire night. Still can't figure it out to this day. (laughs) And, uh, you know, it's one of those things that just creeps you out forever. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, you know... I can't wait for people to, you know, jump on this Saturday and see it. Right. Um, one question. This, somebody keeps asking. I'm going to just ask for her. Um, she wants to know. For, she wants both of you to describe Dakota. What how you feel about Dakota? <laughs> and I guess and like what he's putting you through. <laughs> it's been a question that she keeps asking, and I'm going to ask it for well, her. Well, how about this? Let's let's combine it because there's you a know, couple yeah. like that. Yeah. Describe Dakota in one word. Yeah, I heard uh, there was a couple questions. Des- <laughs> describe Dakota in one word. You know, this one I don't think people are going to catch, but I mean, I think it, for me and Chelsea, it's going to be pretty obvious. Um, but Dakota is just humble, like yeah. in, in every sense of the word. Uh, you know, he doesn't ask for anything. He's always he's always putting us in positions to be successful. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, if you look at it, he has um, me, Chelsea, Alex, who are all, you know, sister, two best friends. Um, there's two other friends from Lakeville, our hometown, that uh-huh. are working on the show. I mean, he doesn't really think about himself. He's always trying to put everyone else on yeah. uh, and try to help out. And, you know, people wouldn't even know that he's 
the creator of the show. Yeah. Um, if, he, if no one said it other than him, he, he wouldn't be the first one to say it. Uh, yeah. And he also the one editing. I mean, the guy puts in so much work and so much time, and um, and he's not you know sitting there asking for you know acknowledgement. He's just doing it because he has love for the the art of it all. Yeah, that that's cool. I mean. I'm like, I don't know Dakota personally, but from what I've seen of him, like, just how he interacts with you two on the show and, you know, how he's been interacting with locations, I could tell that about him for sure. I mean, you get that sense that he's he's in this for the right reasons, and it, it just makes everything more real. It's really cool yeah, to see. Yeah, exactly. He's a, he's a genuine person, and yeah. it's, uh, it's fun to be a part of it. Yeah. I could I could sense that about all of you guys. You guys all seem like you're... You're level-headed, and you're doing this for the the right reasons. You know, you're just really testing yourselves. It's just fun to watch and having fun. Yeah, and you're having fun, and you're yeah. making it fun for everybody watching. But what about you, Chelsea? Well, what's, what, what's that? I would say um, just because I, you know, Taylor gets to see this too because he lives with him. But uh, <laughs> you know, just growing up with him, he's always had this like trait of like motivation. He's been so motivated, yeah. and I would say that that's like the word that I would give him, like. For life, like with everything, yeah. Um, but for the show, I would say that he's like adventurous because he mm. just does things to the max. <laughs> like yeah. he and he, you know, I trust what he does. Like a lot of people, you know, there's some like heat on online sometimes when he, you know, where it's clear clear that I'm very uncomfortable doing something. But yeah, he would never like make me do something if I absolutely just didn't want to do it. Um, he challenges. He's he's a challenger. He's a leader. And yeah. I that's something that we need in this show for sure. Like we needed someone. Oh, like, yeah. I would never have done that if it wasn't my brother, like saying, and my best friend saying, like, you can actually do this. Like yeah. as much as you don't think you can, like you really can do this. And, yeah. Like I wouldn't have been able to do this show without them. I could sure. never have done this with a, like, a random group of people. The only way I could have done this <laughs> is, is with them. Yeah. And you know, some people can do this, and it's not scary for them. You know, like. People are can go into these buildings and uh-huh. you know it just doesn't phase them. But for me, it's totally, totally not phased. Obviously, <laughs> but, <laughs> <you know>? yeah. <laughs> uh, we did have a yeah, yeah. we did have a, a listener ask uh, for Chelsea. Do you ever wish that you had another female presence on the uh, on the team with you guys? Honestly, there are times. <laughs> where it would be awesome just yeah. to like have someone like there be like, oh hey Chelsea, like your hair is sticky straight up. <laughs> <and we're> doing, <laughs> What's he? Like, out, like literally alfalfa it. And, I <laughs> and all the guys are like, you look fun, you look yeah. good. Like, whatever. Like, it's like, I need that. Like, I do need that. And just like, we all have different emotions too. And, right. Um, you know, it's just different, but at least I know I can just be myself and, like, however that may look, like, the ugly days or not, like, I know they're <laughs> going to be, like, the guys are going to be there, and yeah. they've seen me at my worst, and they've seen me at my best, so, I mean, again, <laughs> like, if it was any other dude, yeah. I don't know if I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Completely understandable. Yeah, makes I have, sense. But I have Ray watch my hair to make sure it's all. Oh in yeah, place. I got a, I got a curious comb for him and the hairspray in the back pocket. <laughs> yep, got the bag of product. I have a gear a gear bag and a, a so bag funny. of hair product. And it's not like a glamorous thing, you know. Like yeah. as yeah. much as like you want to look good, you're gonna be on TV. Like all yeah. the photos we do. All the photography done is the day after. This is literally like the funniest thing to me. Yeah. Our photos are actually the morning after we stay at these locations. And it, and it just yeah. cracks me up. Like they're yeah. using me to advertise. And I'm like, this is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all the photos we've been up for over 24 hours. And like, it's just hysterical because we're all. Like, being dead exhausted. Yeah. And everyone's like, no, oh, you guys are you guys are looking like pretty BA and like pretty serious in your photos. It's like, no, it's because we can't keep our eyes open. Right. <laughs> we were devoid of emotion there were at this actually point. Two times where I refused to take pictures. Like I literally said, like, I can't get up. Like I literally was on the ground, like, I'm dead. And they're like, We have to, like, we have to. It's part of the no, we have to get these pictures, and yeah. I think I even cried once. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I 
It was a little bit. Yeah. Well, all of us. <laughs> really, really mad in a picture. That's probably the day where I did not want to be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> But I can tell you, as 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 an investigator ourselves, we we uh we understand what you're going through. You, know, you probably do look better than most of us walking out of there at three o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh yeah, besides him, because he's you know he's got his product bag with him. But yep. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Nicole says you guys still look amazing. Well, thank you, Nicole. Oh, that's oh, they're talking them. about them. <laughs> <laughs> they're not talking about us, man. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> um. How long does it? I got one here. How long does it take you, you to recover you from an investigation before you're ready for the next? Oh man, a lot longer than we were given. I'll tell you that. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, for people that are what uh, have been seeing the show, I mean, it's a it's one continuous road trip, and um, you know, we we get out after we're done with the location, we get right back on the RV and we're going and. You know, we're sleeping as much as we possibly can, but we had a schedule to do, and we had uh, a road trip to, you know, stay through to, and, uh-huh. you know, it's just one after another, one after another. And a good point that Koto was talking about beforehand about, you know, not seeing some footage or not seeing that shadow yeah. at Madison until he was in the editing bay. I mean, there's a lot of times where we're just, you know, shocked and recovering from what happened the night before, and then you you're jumped into another situation and you know you walk into the building even more scared yeah. just because you're a little shell shock right and i can i can but, see like him doing all that editing yeah that he's never getting away from it sometimes yeah, it's like just he's like, just like i mean he's got that's leave. why he's, like you know he's probably that's why we have some of those nightmares he's just yeah. always reliving well it. yeah i mean you don't <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have that escape yeah, because he's mm-hmm. got to get the project done <laughs> you know i that that's yeah so true <laughs> exactly. so true Right. And then uh, I know we only had you guys for an hour, unfortunately, but um, there was just one more question from one of the fans. I want to know if the whole experience has, has strengthened your bond with each other as a, as a team. That's as, a good question. Well, was the question, has it strengthened? Or yeah, has, have you guys, has, yeah, has, has your, your relationship with each other strengthened your bond with each other? I would this. say absolutely, absolutely yeah. strengthened. We've always been really close and in our whole lives. But yeah. when you go through something, I know like there's like bigger life like situations that you can relate this to that are probably more, like honestly more important. But for mm-hmm. us, like this was a big challenge for all of us. Yeah. And it could have been a situation that tore us apart because of, you know, how like emotionally challenging this was or it could have been a situation that really bonded us together and made us super vulnerable and like just like a perfect situation to either go one or two directions and I just learned a lot about the guys yeah that I I already knew but I didn't like it was just different like how they actually do really care about you like you know, even behind the scenes, like, nobody knows this uh-huh. because, like, you don't film this part. But, like, Tanner, he would literally walk me to the outhouse or the bathroom. I literally was still scared. <laughs> Not like, oh, the cameras are off. Like, yeah. I can go walk downstairs to the bathroom. Like, no, like, the whole thing being scary. And, you know, it's like, people don't see those, like, small parts. They, right. you know, they only see kind of, like, the highlight reel. But I just, there's just so many things that I noticed about them that... It, like good things that were yeah. brought to the surface through this experience for sure that's awesome nice. yeah and I can echo everything that uh, Chelsea just said I mean you hear all like the horror stories of you know like like music, like bands that get together and they go on a road trip and, or on a yeah. tour and because they're too close to each other for such a long time yeah. they end up not liking each other but <laughs> you know the crazy thing is is I mean we've all grown older and you know we've, we're in different states now but yeah. You know, Chelsea, Dakota, and uh, Alex and I, I mean, we're the friends that hang out every day. And it's like, it's not like a weird, not a weird thing. We don't get bored with each other. Yeah. And this was another one of those things. Now, the only difference was, is, is now we're together 24 hours, <laughs> 24 yeah. seven for yeah. over a month. And, um, you know, as much as it was a hard road trip, yeah. um, I think the reason why it seemed so easy was because that we had our our bond already. I mean, right. you couldn't. I don't think you could do this same exact concept with four random cast members that you just 
pick out of a out of a list. Right. Um, I mean, so I mean, you have to have like this bond, otherwise it wouldn't work. And you know, going through this trip, you really you really get to see you know Chelsea. I mean, she loved you know the competition or the yeah. competitiveness and the challenge of something, and she wants to see it every, all the way through. And it's awesome to have have that a part of this. And she, you know, not just because she's a woman, but she gives this whole different side of perspective that yeah. you know Alex Dakota and I don't have and she's able to like do some I don't know she just she has an awesome element and everyone has their own awesome element to um, the show and you know having been on this huge road trip and done this whole experience you know it totally made us a lot closer that's awesome and there's something to be like when everyone gets scared together I feel like they stay together oh so yeah yeah bonding oh yeah for sure I yeah. could I could definitely vouch for that feeling <laughs> Ray's going to walk me to the house nice from now on. Nice quote, Tanner. <laughs> you stay together, you stay together. Oh, man. I've got to write that down. I'm usually good for one of those quotes. <laughs> I can see the Tanner memes coming now. <laughs> yep. Get scared together, you stay together. <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, I know I only had you for an hour, but I want to thank you so yes. much for coming on. Yes, thank um, you. It's been a great... Yeah, it's yep. been a great. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, been a great interview. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, Destination Fear is the best, and got a lot of fans on here, and, and us included. Fingers crossed for season two, and we cannot wait for the rest of this season to come up. So, awesome job! And thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so you guys. much. Yeah, yeah. Love yep. to be on again. Uh, absolutely. Right, if you guys absolutely. ever find yourself in Northeast Ohio, which you should, because Ohio is the most haunted state in the Americas, the United States <laughs> of America. Uh, definitely stop on by. But thank you. For so much for being on tonight. I appreciate it. Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have Bye. a good night. Ha- happy holidays. Yep, happy holidays. <laughs> happy holidays. Yep. Well, that was an awesome interview, huh? Yeah. It was. It was awesome. Thank you guys, everybody, for listening. And uh, I'm sure you guys all enjoyed that as much as we did. Um, I'm a, like, and I'm not I'm not just fan and boy here. I'm, I actually like, I enjoy the show. Yeah, I liked it. And, uh, you know, I wanted to have them on, and, you know, I felt they'd be, and just like they were, just really cool to talk to and, and learn about them and uh, have nothing but high hopes for the rest of the season. And yeah. It's kind of a bonus too. to have Danner, Tanner and uh, Chelsea on for the whole hour. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, originally, be... yeah, originally we were only supposed to have Dakota and Tanner, but, uh, you know, thank God I, I, if I wasn't using my cell phone for the interview, then it would have happened. Yeah. Because God knows I can't get the phone system here to work right now. Nope. <laughs> and we can't get Skype It's just me. It's not karma. It's the way I cannot handle it. <laughs> it's too much tech. Yeah. But um, like I said, everybody, thank you. Um, yeah, Laura, for Ohio the is the most haunted state in the oh, world. Yeah. You didn't know that, Laura? Everybody should know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Vicky. And guys, we're, the show's not over. Um, just the interview part uh, with the Destination crew, the Destination that ah, Destination I Fear. I, all my my good talking is spent because I did the interview. <laughs> now it's well. That's why we brought Aaron time. here so he could do the rest of the show while we go <laughs> <Right>? smoke. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but that being said, um, <laughs> stay tuned. We're going to be back here in about ten minutes. We're going to take a quick break. Um, you know, stay tuned. Um, we'll be back in what, about 10 minutes. Yeah, we're going to talk to Aaron, somebody that ooh, just ooh. is new to the paranormal field. Yeah, we're going to get the, uh, the perspective of a new investigator in our Dark Alley group, so that'll be interesting. Get yeah. to learn a lot more about Aaron, and uh, stay tuned. If the show's guys, not over, folks. Yep, ask some questions, see if we can make him sweat. <laughs> <laughs> so we will uh, spook you in a few, kids. Just hang tight. Oh, okay. great. Um, Thanks, or, Tony. Thanks for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty excited about the whole experience, and um, I remember being, like, really excited, like, telling people at work about it, um, and they were excited. I was excited going, you know, snack gathering uh-huh. at the gas station. <laughs> yep, that's a big thing. And there thing. was, like, this whole big thing, and then, uh, like, just everything that went into it, if, all the way down to like the stopping at McDonald's because Michael and Kate said that's what we do. We stop at McDonald's on the way. <laughs> yeah. So like I got to experience yep. like the full thing. And then um, I went into Madison yeah. not expecting anything really. Right, right. And that was my first experience. <laughs> yeah. And I absolutely under I for the longest time I couldn't understand why Michael loved that place so much. Yeah. Like it's it's an old building and 
some of the pictures and stuff that I yeah. saw, he'd show me some photos and some video footage. <laughs> and I was just like, why would you, like, it looks like it stinks. And it's musty. And, yeah. and yeah, all these things. And, and, you know, the first time walking in, I remember like, okay, like, this is kind of what I expected. Because Michael got me really pumped for it because we watched the documentary on the way up. I got you. Yeah. And um, Madhouse one. Yeah. yeah the Madhouse. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, that's all right. This yeah. is this is getting. I was getting more and more excited the yeah. whole the, the uh, trip up, and um, I, I quickly understood what it was that draw that is drawing people there. Oops, yeah. sorry. Um, even just doing the w- initial walkthrough, uh-huh. you know. Oh yeah, it was. It gets you. Yeah. <laughs> and and now I whenever I talk to people about Madison, I just tell them I can't wait to go back again. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, we shall be back. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. What was your experience? The first experience you had there. Um, so we were walking. It was um right when we had started our investigation for the evening, the first the first investigation. Uh-huh. Um, and we were walking. Walking down the hallway. There's the nightly. Okay. Sorry, we just the nightly drags are going down the road. <laughs> down two sixty one. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. We saw them. We saw yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, we caught them last week. Um, <laughs> so, the, my first experience at Madison um, that really just kind of caught me was we were walking down towards the laundry slash drunk tank slash yep. cement room. Yeah, and. I would I would have sworn on a stack of Bibles that there was somebody talking to me, standing about I don't know like a foot to my right here, yeah, and to my right, and um, I couldn't make out what they were saying, and I uh. turned to say what, and and there was nobody there, <laughs> mm-hmm. and then I was like, yeah. don't say anything, <laughs> because people are gonna think you're crazy <laughs> um, we're all crazy in this group well, yeah, yeah but you know that but being new you yeah. know like I was like dude that. That's just we're not going to talk about that. Right? That's, the, that's the, my internal dialogue yeah. was like, dude, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah. Um, because you know, I didn't know what to expect. Ex- you know, aside from what I had seen on television programs. Yeah. Um, but that was that was probably the most I don't know real experience, and and, yeah. and there was nothing there. Um, <laughs> in fact, like if I had to tell, t- describe the person, like yeah. I he had some sort of hat on, like a fedora almost. Yeah, but how would I? Because I would. It's like I saw something sort of out of my peripheral. Mm-hmm. But again, turn around, he's gone. Yeah, uh, or nobody's there. And then um, that's how it always happens, right? <laughs> uh, we went into the cement room. Yeah, and you had set up. And I can't remember the name of the your meter there with the three the temperature. Oh, the EDI. The yeah. EDI. Yeah. And that right there cemented it for me. I mean that. You know, that could have been a figment of my imagination. That's how I talked myself out of saying much about it, the guy that was talking to me. Yeah, we all we all talk ourselves out of some of that yeah. stuff sometimes. <laughs> but when we were in that cement room... At, oh, sorry. Oh, that's okay. That was still connected to the... <laughs> <laughs> we, uh... You had started asking questions about, uh, do you want all the men to leave? Mm-hmm. Do you want all the girls yeah. to leave? Yeah. And at one point, you said, whenever you did say something about, do you want all the guys to leave? And that machine, the EDI, just started popping. Blue, yellow. I don't <laughs> yeah. remember temperature change, but yeah. blue. And, and it was just going crazy. And I was yeah. just like, I'm out. <laughs> I got to get the hell out of here. Yeah, right. <laughs> because I'm not going to get beat up. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, but that whole experience, because then the next thing I think happened shortly after that, we um, the motion lights went off that night also. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. And, and um, something I really respected about that, you know, being my first time, I could have, you guys could have been like, yep, there's something here. And I would have like, yes, there is. But, you know, we took our time. We, we all sort of stopped where we were at and wiggled and jiggled and stuck a foot out <laughs> yeah. and a hand up, waving everything around, trying to get the light to go off again. And we couldn't get it to go off again. Just um, providing more support right. that we weren't by ourselves. Well, we weren't alone. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah. I remember the first time, you know, kind of going back. Um, it was dark when we re- came up to Madison, but I just remember mm. seeing the building and be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, it's intimidating just driving up to it. Yeah. Not knowing. I mean, I had only seen like maybe one like locally done independent documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it was done by the Monroe Falls Paranormal Society. Um, they had a a little 
uh, documentary series called, I think, uh, Mysterious Midwest. Okay. And I seen it on there. I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. I mean, they did like Farnham. They did a lot of local places. I'm like, that's really cool. And I had heard through for the, the group that we started working with, uh, Ohio or o- Open. Um, and we went there for the first time. And it just, it was always one of those places, like, no matter what you, like, no matter what night it was. Like, some nights were, were definitely not as active as others. Yeah. But it always, it, there was there's always something, something to hook. Yeah. There's always, there's always a hook. Something. Yeah. That makes you want to, like, come back yeah oh yeah <laughs> like there, we've been to places like i really don't care to go back yeah but and some of the bigger places like i've been to waverly hills i've been there twice and honestly i'm not saying the place is not haunted because we did have some stuff happen but you know you, when you consider like how much you paid again in for the first in the first place and yeah what you witness and experience and it's just it's not a place that i would be dying to get back into mm-hmm. like if the, as a group we decided to go and we had the backers and enough people to go and like make it worth it for everybody i would definitely go but it's like personally speaking it's not a place i go back to madison however i would freaking go there every weekend if i could yeah. right right to right. investigate um and especially you know and i know probably i, mean, I know you agree mike that since adam has taken over and since they've been renovating the place oh yeah cleaning and and adding more the furniture antiques the play the activity there has multiplied unbelievable when we were just up there two weeks ago uh-huh. was it two two three weeks ago yeah yeah and it was it was popping that madison did not disappoint mm-hmm. yeah yeah the cold yeah. did not keep them away no, let me no. tell you and even with big groups i mean there yeah. was what like yeah, 20 a, people there or something yeah. like that? 20 something, I think. Yeah. yeah. And we we're going in groups of like breaking up into three groups of 10 or that was something like that. It was a big groups. And we're all packed in a tiny room and we're interacting with spirit. I mean, yes. There were how many of us <laughs> packed in that cement room? Yeah. And the temperature, instead of going up, was going was down. going down. You would think, though, so yeah, all with the body, the body heat, heat would, would be going it go up. up. They were, as 12, we're talking, 12, yeah. 13 people in there yeah. and it wasn't a very big space. No. And it was just steadily going down. Yep. It dropped like what, almost like around five degrees. Yeah, yeah. The EDI device was was, was dead. Nuts. Yeah. And then we, I can't remember what we started talking about, but it just, like, it was a steady blue light. Like it, it wasn't yeah. even like beeping. Yep. It was just beep. Well, the REM pod went up on the. Yeah. I've never had. I've never used a REM pod. But yeah. I was like, all right, let's see what happens. I put it in that room. Mm-hmm. In the corner asylum yep. room. Yeah. Sarah and I were kind of like out, out a little bit, and then all of a sudden I just heard. Beep, beep, beep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So that was kind of, you know. Yeah, we we're getting, I mean, everybody standing there was, called me out by the the Phasma box, called me out by yeah. name twice. Said I was a big old boy, which I'm like, okay, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. But yeah, Madison has definitely been a place that hooks you. Like, what would you, I mean, now that you've done it, like, yeah. you have places that you think that you would like to go to. Like I want to try those. Moundsville. Yeah. And um, we've talked a little bit about the um, Conneaut. Conneaut Hotel. Yeah. 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 Um, and I know that there's a place that Michael told me about during, I think, one of our trips home. Mm-hmm. Or I, th- I think it was our trip home about a uh, house in Cleveland. House of Wills. House, oh, house of, Wills. of Wills. Yeah. Yeah. But I heard that, I mean, Michael, the way he talked about it, it was pretty dark energy there. Um, yeah. It's yeah. Not, there is. It's not the same type of experience as going to, like, Madison or Hinsdale mm-hmm. or... Um, that place has messed other. some people up. Yeah, that, that's oh, yeah. more of a, yeah. like, more, like, a vicious or uh, yeah. facetious type of energy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's. Uh, I don't think Becca wants to go back there. Oh, no, Becca will not go back there. Um, when I, After I filmed with them, she was like, I'm done. I'm not going back. <laughs> I've tried to talk Adam into going back there for like a redo, and he's like, oh, "Becca won't let me." <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I'm sure you know if he. I know Miranda to wants to go there really bad. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure the rest. I don't know if Sarah's not really sure, but I can understand that because she we we just talk about some of the bad stuff. Yeah. yeah. The, but it's because it's not in the the nicest of lo- locations. No, but it's <laughs> we're, we're we're protected, I believe. Yeah. We, we get uh, yeah. Uncle Tony there, and you, you know, we're we'll be okay. <laughs> I definitely think it's from like, and I'm not saying this to be like 
a know-it-all, but I think it's definitely a good place to bring, like, your newer guy mm-hmm. people. Yeah. It's a good place to learn shielding and yep. grounding and, like, how to separate fear from the neighborhood from fear of what's going on inside right. the building. Yeah. yeah. Because I definitely think that does affect your mindset. when you Oh, yeah, because you're yeah. always wondering. Yeah. Like, when we were down in that basement, it was Trent, me, and Kate, uh-huh. and you're like, is there somebody down here? Like, right. not yeah. ghost-wise, yeah, right, right. is there yeah. somebody down here? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, Madison, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we got to introduce that to... Mm-hmm. People, because that's, I mean, it is what it's our favorite place, isn't it? Delicious. For sure. Yeah. And, um, my kids keep asking to go. I took my daughters just for like a daytime walkthrough. Uh, we were just, Kim was at a, a convention, I think, yeah, or she something. Was in Columbus or something? Yeah. And it, for, uh, for, uh, I can't even remember what it was. It was either for work, for her, uh, speech therapy cert- yeah. certification or something like that. But, I took the girls and they absolutely loved it. And I was I was interested to see the reaction to it. Um, Piper was just more into like walking around and taking pictures, and just like seeing the building. Mm-hmm. Eliza was like having feelings, like like she was like she walking knew where stuff was. She knew where stuff was without me telling her any ghost stories, like experiences that I've had or know people have had in certain areas. Wow. She'd walk in. I'm not even talking like Sarah's room with like all the creepy yeah. dolls. Right. Like just some of There's the like regular. Down in the hallway, yeah. like in places that I've had experiences. She was like, oh, daddy. It's like, I feel creepy here. Like, she's like looking at her arm. She's like, I got goosebumps. I'm like, oh, she's got, she's got something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See, <laughs> but, Robert would be like that. My, my seven year old yeah. son, he's like a bit of an empath and a uh, jerk face. Yes. I said that for Michael. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. He knows it. He knows yes, it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's right. I'm battling a seven-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, he's a bit of an empath, though. He, like, picks up on feelings, you know, and picks up on things that, like, my 11-year-old wouldn't pick up on. Right. My 11-year-old would probably just sit there and say he's bored. Yeah. You know, yeah. I think, you know, I've asked a lot of questions. I think not a lot, but several questions about, like, how do you open yourself up to certain uh-huh. things? And yeah. I think my oldest son is going to have that, that he would have that same uh, hurdle. Battle. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas Robert, I think it would just kind of come natural to him. Right. But um, I know they get really excited every time I go. Well, yeah. last time we went, I brought home a pendulum. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Robert insisted, that's the seven-year-old, insisted on trying it out. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah. Because I know his mom's really right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. finicky when it comes yeah. to anything with that, like that kind of stuff. And... um. But I, I said, all right, go ahead. And he he held it up, and he said, all right, ghosts, is there somebody here with us? And it started to say yes. I was like, all right, put that thing away. <laughs> like, and he, I watched his hand, like, yeah. it's like just like I watched yours at Shalersville. Yeah. No yeah. movement. Yeah. And that thing started moving yes, and I was like, all right, put it away. Yeah. Put it away. Yeah. Um, and the pendulum is, is a weird thing because I, too, like, even using it, I'm, like, always watching myself, making sure I'm not – like just, and it's I get so stiff like, yep. It almost starts weighing my arm down, and I'm like I can't I can't hold it up anymore. Yep. But sometimes it, I'll just be fine, and I can feel the energy coming through it. Like it just, and I'm watching. I'm like freaking out because it's answering questions. Like I've actually asked had people give me questions to ask that I wouldn't know the answers to. That's what. That's the good. That's a good. Yeah. Trick. And it was answering correctly to the questions like mm-hmm. um. I was filming with uh, Marcus Hogg when he was doing paranormal films. Uh, we did an episode down in uh, the Gill House um, in Central Ohio, and uh, we did a set. Didn't we, we didn't he didn't put add it to the film, but we were I did a pendulum session in the dining room, and uh, one of the ladies that works there, one of the volunteers, um, caretakers or whatever, she was watching us and she was like weirded out because like i didn't really have a whole like background in history so i wouldn't know how to fake an answer right right. but i I think she was a little skeptical of it still and i'm like okay you're just asking me questions that you would know for sure that none of us would and she would tell me to ask a question and i would ask it and i was answering like the pendulum was answering dead on yeah and it's weird too because it's like just kind of a testament to my journey with this whole thing yeah like when i first started i thought people who were into crystals and pendulums were a bunch of yahoos and you know, if there wasn't a scientific, you know, electrical instrument to measure things, you know, you didn't know what you're doing. But 
I think you leave. It's amazing I, the journey you take. It is. I mean, I've come around like to this weird like spiritualist movement type mm-hmm. way of investigating again. Like, I take like the EDI device, and you know, I'll have a spirit box, and um, we run EVPs. But I, I fumble around with my EVP most of the time, and like mm-hmm. I'll forget to turn it on or whatever because I'm I'm about the experience now. Yeah, I'm about connecting on a physical like mental level with whatever we're. And, you know, you and Michael are both really good at that. Um, yeah. That's something I, I need to work on mm-hmm. for myself is being a, being more open when you go into those Yeah. Um, I mean, you still places. have to be on guard. I sure. Mean, yeah. You still got to come at it from – you have to have some – you have to have a trace of skepticism when you go in. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, then everything is haunted. Exactly. Every bump, every yeah. pebble fall is, is all demons or whatever. <laughs> right, right. You know, but – you know, I definitely think we've We changed. do a good job of figuring that out. Yeah. I mean, we do our debunking work. We, mm-hmm. we try to make sure. Like the whole EDI device. We were yeah, trying. Yeah. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the, yeah, everything. I mean, we've. <coughs> I think that that's just something I never picked up on in, like, the um, television shows. They don't yeah. show a lot of that. No, because they're going right for the. Right. They You know, they want views and mm-hmm. viewers and all yeah, that, fans sure. and whatever. But, um the first night at Madison, uh, you know, when we were doing like a 25 minute session or so, 25, 30 minutes, and then go outside and all together as a group, listening to the EVPs, Mm -hmm. talking about our experiences and then going back at it. Yeah. Um, whenever the baby doll moved on the wheelchair. That's right. Oh my gosh. Yes. Dude, that was crazy. Oh yeah. Um, I don't. I'd, I'd probably have told. We've the talked story. about, it, but let's say it again. No, we were <laughs> like again. This we need to rename this the Madison Show. <laughs> <laughs> when, it was your first time there. It was my first time. Yeah. Um, there is like this little creepy doll that sits on the arm of a wheelchair in the asylum floor, and it um, has fallen off on camera. Yeah, it's fallen off on camera. No, nobody around. Anybody who doesn't understand, like, have seen, like, physically picked up this doll, would think, okay, it's just a doll. It's light. It's top heavy. Not top heavy. No. This is bottom heavy. This is like sand a, on the bottom of it yes. that like keeps it in a spot. Yeah, almost. well it's like But not we, really uh, sand, but it has a battery box in it, I think. Yeah. That weighs the bottom half down. So when it sits on the arm of a level arm like a chair, it's bottom it's not going in. I've tried jump I tried jump because we were trying to debunk the video. Yeah. I was jumping around and like kind of like trying to get this thing to move and it was not moving so and the legs curled the way yeah, the legs curled yeah. went around the arm of yeah. the wheelchair so it was it was secure yeah it was sitting on top of it securely but um well we we're investigating and it was where it always was on the arm of the chair and we wrapped up the session in the asylum floor we went down to do our normal thing you know take a break go outside do whatever talk about what we experienced when we went back up for our second trip, the doll was in the seat. Yes. Seated. Seated in the chair. Like, yep. not on the arm, but on the, the chair seat. And the only people there were Adam and the Mad Crew, and they wouldn't pull that stuff. <clears throat> no. no, no. They don't bother with your investigation. Mm-hmm. Um, even though we're friends, like, they wouldn't do that. They would that. say that eventually, like, at the end. Oh, yeah, yeah we did it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But nope. Oh, nope. They, would, they would jump on the chance. Oh, that, yeah. Like, if they did <laughs> screw with us, oh, we yeah. would know about it. <laughs> But <laughs> only after we had flipped out and thought it was right, something for real. Right. But, um, you know, they were in the back house most yes. of the time. Like, we had the, the run of the building. But, yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. But, like, again, we did. And, uh, unfortunately, the camera wasn't rolling, of course, at that time. Yeah, because when we went back <laughs> they downstairs, turned like, there's the cameras. Afterwards. Then yeah. they were like, oh, well, let's turn those on. Yeah. You know, like, oh, come on. Right. We could have seen, like, what happened. Like, did the doll get up and, like, decide it wanted to sit on that? Right. Oh. We got a couple of first-time listeners, it seems like, uh, or one, um, John Covey, Covey, I don't know how to say it. I'm going to say Covey. Good evening, first time tuning in. Dustin Garrison, hey guys, Dark Paranormal Society, Victoria, Texas. Yeah, we met Dustin at the that's MadCon. A, that's a long name. What's that? Oh, wait, Victoria, Texas isn't part of their name. Hey, he's it? only one one word off of our name. I know, man. I'm going to have to call copyright on this. Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> Just because you dropped Allie from the name doesn't mean you're not. No, I'm just kidding. Buddy. That's awesome. Thanks for tuning in. Yes. Thank you, John, for tuning in. But um, yeah, Madison is one of those places that just like hooks. It doesn't matter if it's like a footstep mm-hmm. or a random like disembodied voice. It just gets you going back. And like I always it's say, it's an addiction. Yes. it really is. Yeah. yeah, Madison is the king or queen, whatever you want to call, it, of misdirection. 
Oh yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. It'll make like, you like, it'll you'll be in one area, you'll hear the noise, yeah. you go down to that yeah. area, and it's back to where you yep, were before. Yeah. Like yeah. it's like trying to find the beeping fire smoke detector. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I, I don't know much about like a lot of other places. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure how familiar you are with like. Um, their day-to-day stuff. But mm-hmm. I, I will say this. I was pretty impressed the last time we went up how many volunteers there are there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are a <clears> lot <throat> of people involved in the... Um, Upkeep of that place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, from the lady that's making the pendulums yeah. to... Oh, yeah. um, Making sure that coffee's out, giving yeah. people the yep. tours. Yep. Like I was, I was I was, actually rather amazed with watching the Mad Crew like Mad Crew, yeah. work. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. You know, I'm just like... Yeah. Man, that coffee is like everything I mean, is all like yeah. they're like they're answering questions or like doing yeah. all this stuff inside there. Pizza's yeah. coming. They're putting on bracelets. Like they, oh, had, yeah. they were rocking it <laughs> yeah. out. We ran yeah, out of propane in the heater though. Yeah, well, yeah. that'll happen. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> never again, Jim. Do they? Have <laughs> <laughs> I do believe other, that was Jim Eastlake's fault. Eastlake. <laughs> um, do like yeah, other sure. places have these kind of groups, like the Mad? Uh, Not like the Mad Crew. No, Mad Crew. Adam no. has a way of bringing people together for a common purpose. Yeah, yeah. He there's calls like, it his army. Yeah, you know, there's no they pay. Call Mad Crew. It's all volunteer. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean people. I mean like Shelley, Denise, all those Savage. All the lo- especially the local volunteers, they all live like within a mile, like yeah. a couple miles of the place. They're there almost on a daily basis, yes, doing whatever needs done. Yep. You know, Adam is there. I mean, he, Adam lives out towards Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. and he's out there constantly. I mean, I mean, it's his building, yeah, yeah. absolutely. But he's there a lot, um, especially for not living in Ohio, right? And he lives like an hour and a half, two hours away. Mm-hmm. Um, he just he has a really good group of people up yeah, there just helping yeah. carry. I mean, and as far down as here, I mean, you guys yeah. drive. I know Michael. Back in, I don't know, 14, yeah. 15, he was telling me all the time about all these trips he was taking up to Madison yeah. to help paint or yeah. help yeah. Mm-hmm. refurbish different parts of the of the building. Um, and I think that that's, it's not, that's it's pretty not, cool. There's no, there's no other place that I know of that has a, a core volunteer group like that. No. That's awesome, um, yeah. To be part of something like that right. is... <clears throat> I mean, we've been to other locations. Like you said, you were talking about Moundsville. Mm-hmm. Every time we've been there, it's usually the same woman. Yeah, two, two people. people. Yeah, usually the same woman and one of her helpers. One of which, the last time I was down there, I'm not sure if he's still on, but he's got a lot of projects going on. Steve Hummel, um, he's a paranormal uh, investigator. He's got the uh, archive of uh, haunted items down there. Now he's got his like own little museum. Um, but it's always just been like two people. Mm-hmm. And like I know there's probably a lot more that are involved like during the day. But when you go like after hours for these ghost hunts, you only see like who's there who's right. volunteering. Mm-hmm. Moundsville has always been the same lady. I think her name is Pam, um, but or Tina, one of the two. <clears throat> but it's always been you've never seen like go in and like see just a group of like ten people that right. just love the place. They all pitch in and just like take their responsibilities and they take them seriously, but they still have fun at the same time. Oh so, yeah, like, they're entertaining. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's no there's no other group like that. Yep. The Mad Crew is unique. You're unique, Tony. <laughs> trying Tony's to destroy me. Yeah. <laughs> I say, many have tried, many have failed. <laughs> Did Chelsea have any dreams about the shadow person after the show? You know, I don't, I don't think we really asked that question. No, we we didn't uh, didn't even think of that question. Where were you time. earlier, Dustin? Yeah, you, <laughs> you missed that part of the conversation. <laughs> I probably should have taken the destination fear picture off the screen, but. You know um, what? No, nope, it's the same show. Yeah, it's the same show. Same episode. We'll answer your questions about Destination yeah. Fear. Oh, yeah. yeah. So Chelsea <laughs> did not have bad dreams? <laughs> yeah, right. I believe um, that was Dakota. Yeah, it was <laughs> more Dakota. Dakota. Had dreams, but like, like we said earlier, he was he's like in constant Destination Fear mode. He doesn't yeah. have... Yeah, so that's just... He's inundated with that yeah, all I mean, the time. Yeah, he's editing. If he's not filming and on the RV, like planning everything, he's editing the show and just like whatever. I mean, it's just nonstop for him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Chelsea and Tanner are involved in all, every which way, but they don't. They get a more of a break. It sounds like between when they're done filming mm-hmm. a season, and you know, that's so some I, warm I Pepsi know. sound. If you guys heard it warm, over the radio, it sure did. It was like one of those Room AMR videos Pepsi. or something. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. So, like, um, 
yeah, Moundsville, we'll have to we'll we'll go as a group. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it another shot. Like yeah. I said, you know, it didn't have much happen there, but yeah. you know that was the first place I had to do a quarantine. Where did you where, where did you do your quarantine? I don't know some room that had like a gynecological gynecological table in it, so I just sat there with my feet in the stirrups. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna do that at Madison, but I was like, nah, that's not appropriate. Probably not on that one. I don't yeah, think anybody yeah. was supposed to get on that one. But yeah. this one, it was just in a freaking room. Yeah. And I was like, all right, I'll sit in here. Yeah. That was we my need a, as a group, we probably, I mean, we should do that and see, well, if they're comfortable with it. What? It's not that something I would force on anybody. Sure. Like, sure. I know you would do it. Oh, you yeah. You would go I mean, into a room by yourself oh, and, yeah. and do, like, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. I um, mean, yeah, we've always, we would never force anybody to do no, that. But I think it's definitely we a good experience. Them. Yeah. Well, no, would never, you like to, to challenge yourself? Or like maybe that. just two. I, uh, you, know, yeah. you know, just something. Just go in until you can't do it anymore. I, mean, I, I sent uh, the um, with like a twenty minute limit though mm-hmm. the trailer <laughs> video for Destination Fears Madison episode yeah, yeah. to a bunch of people because uh-huh. it talked about Sarah's room and I was like I yeah. sat in that closet yeah <laughs> nice and then I, I was like then I, we went to a house in New York Hinsdale I sat in that closet too yeah you're like are you crazy I was yeah. like of course <laughs> you're all about being in the closet I, it's time for you to come out or coming out of the closet. <laughs> <laughs> Stay in, Aaron. Stay in. <laughs> Stay in. Stay in. <laughs> Shut the door. Lock it. <laughs> Is that just a completely wrong picture, Michael. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely. Uh, I think the group would do well at Madison. No, I just thought or you like closets. Madison, yeah, I do like closets. I do too. I get. In that, I sat in a closet too. I shut the door. Yeah, I've stood in. Yeah. I'm, I still think that was just people like thinking, you know, the door yeah. open, yeah. door shut. Well, I think you know. I I start to. Start to have hesitation when people start using words like portal. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's saying I don't believe in, in mm-hmm. things, but right. yeah, I just don't understand it a, what it is. Right, like it's a portal. Yeah. Like I'm thinking, mm-hmm. like He Man, Masters of the you Universe kind of portal. In another place, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or is that Transformers? Right, I they know. had the big thing and they walk through it, and they're yeah. in a, they're on Earth now yeah, or right. whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that's what I always uh, think of when portal. It's like a <laughs> lightning and stuff, right? And it I, so I don't know exactly what they mean when they say portal, but I. Maybe there's something I didn't really feel much in there. Yeah, what, I didn't what they're talking about, much. I think, is basically a doorway in and out from different, a way for spirits to get in and out. And they think that something is guarding that area, something that's not nice. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I I haven't felt. Yeah, here's my yeah, thought. With the that. only thing that I could say that we experienced here that points to that being not a, necessarily a portal, but like a a point of contention, like a point of not so niceness evil mm-hmm. as we were doing i was working with uh sean's older group with uh, and a bunch of friends of mine amber and sean and, mm-hmm. and chris um we were doing we had a really intense um dousing run dow- i can't think of the word dowsing run that's session. what i'm here um, <laughs> amber was holding and, and amber is a very she's very gifted she's very sensitive um and it started off with chris they kept she kept asking where Chris was and they'd point directly to Chris. You know, like just like the pendulum, I was watching her and she mm-hmm. wasn't moving at all. She had him like tied up against her chest. She was very <laughs> s- stiff and still what? Dustin said Stargate. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think my laugh- mind always goes to like the wormhole in Deep Space Nine. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was laughing because you said chest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um but like it would like like no matter where he was in the room, it would like, where's Chris? Like she would just like spontaneously ask, after a bunch of other questions, and it would point both would point right to him, and like he's like, okay, I'm done. He was starting to feel like weird, like this just entered, like somebody was like, watching him. Yeah, he's like, dude, I can't take this. I got to go in the hallway. She would still ask where Chris was, and it would point directly into the hallway where he would be standing. Like even if he was like a couple feet down towards another room, it would point in his direction. Mm. Wow. So I was in the hallway, like, watching it and watching him at the same time. I'm like, it's pointing right at you, dude. <laughs> but we were asking, like, can we go in the closet? Can we go in the closet? And it just kept saying, no, do not go in the closet. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what it was. I mean, it was something warning us not to go in. So whatever we were talking with at that point was, nope. I think, an, you a, in there. a positive right. spirit telling us to stay away. Right. You don't want to go in there. But I stood in there, and I don't really, I've never really felt any kind of weird energy. Um, My thought is, it's like, is a door really going to stop a, a portal or whatever? You would think, yeah. Like, that's another thing. There, there's, there's like team 
closed door, team open door. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously, if you want people to experience activity, if the and the activity is amped up when the door is open, you got to leave it open, right? Absolutely. <laughs> but really, is a door going to stop it? No. I mean, if, if a, a spirit can just walk through a wall. Right, I mean, yeah. You know. Theoretically. Theoretically speaking. Is a store really going to, a store, a door going to really stop it from walking into the room? Mm. No. I don't know. I but will. did you feel like there was a, a, did you feel anything in Sarah's room? Like, did no, you feel? Um, not in the closet. I didn't yeah. feel anything specific in the closet. We had, I think, maybe a couple of instances in which something, you know, unique happened in yeah. there. But I yeah. think the most I experienced was in the cement room. Mm-hmm. And the asylum. Yeah. Oh, sure. Because, I mean, like, the asylum, you know, I went up and stood in that room. And it's at the, down the hallway from the asylum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I can't, what's the name? It's on the corner. It's the room that the gentleman had a hard time in on the uh, Mad Town. Madhouse. Madhouse. Yeah. I stood in that the room. corner room? Or yeah. was it a different room? I think it's one of those corner rooms. Yeah. It's, like, not, it's on the inside wall. Yeah. Okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'll tell you, I felt something in there. Yeah. And it was... It was weird. Um, offsetting. Offsetting. Yes. Hello, Mr. Brian Baum mm-hmm. from Bearded Paranormal. Um, but it was more like like I was frozen. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I just wanted to stand there and not move and yeah. not talk. Yeah. And I don't know what was propelling me to feel that way. Mm-hmm. Um, there was nothing recording because I'm not going to lie. When you guys have those recorders going, I try yeah. to be as quiet as possible oh, because right, I don't right. because I don't want to say, "Oops, that was my stomach." Yeah, right. Or, "Oops, yeah. I've moved my foot" or something. So yeah. I just try to be extremely quiet. Right. What you calling out my stomach for, Aaron? <laughs> oh, that was that your stomach? It's always my stomach. Oh, okay. Holy crap, guys! I kind of oh forgot yeah. what time. Wow. It <laughs> that last hour went fast because we only got five minutes before the next show. So oh, jeez. Well, sorry, <laughs> I feel like I took all the time. No, yeah. dude, that's what you were on for. We were all oh, shame on you. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I will let thank everybody... you for coming and hanging out. And you're hey, always I appreciate welcome. It. Yeah, I, I will give you guys an update. I have been very miserly, and I've been a jerk to a lot of people. I am hoping the ghost of Christmas on. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> nice. I'm waiting. That's always a good question. Like, if you could pick one of the three ghosts, which ghost would you? Not future. I've said that many times. Yeah, you don't I... want future. No, I think I would go. My past is pretty clean. I mean, I have nothing really. Yeah. Oh, wait, if we, no. The presence wait. is right there, so yeah. I think I go past. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know that I want. If we go in the past, can we change things? No. Nope. No. I don't just like Christmas that. Carol. You just see I it. do not want to relive that. So I'll go to. I would rather go to the future than relive yeah. the past. Yeah. The future is always so crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think just because of like, especially like with stress at work and things that I'm dealing with like right now, I almost need the trip in my present to to see what I have. Ah, oh, there you go. To see wow, that was deep, the Bruce. great things that I have going mm-hmm. on for me right now. Yeah. Because you forget about all that. Hundred percent. I agree with that. Yeah. I mean, even the in the Mickey. Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol, the future guy, was scary. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, was a big, Pete. It was with a big cigar. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Why, well, it's yours, Ebenezer. Now, now, death in Monty Python was always funny. <laughs> <laughs> just trying to speak American. <laughs> I just want to say something. Now, the Jim, the Jim Carrey <laughs> Let's one. Let's talk about this. The Jim Carrey Disney one, that, that future was pretty... That was dark. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah that was, was a dark, dark one. Yeah. And the original. My favorite. dark one. Yeah, favorite. yeah, it is. Because it's got want and... Yeah. What's the two kids in there? Oh, shoot. Wait, that's the present. Want yeah. and need or something like yeah, that. Yeah, want and, yeah. Something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, we watched the uh, the really good one that was like shot. It's black and white. It was uh, filmed in the 50s. It's yes. actually called Scrooge. Yeah. It was uh, Alistair yeah. Sim. Yep. That's like our favorite one that we watch. And my personal favorite one is the one with Captain Picard. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Patrick Stewart. Yep. And then the kids will absolutely obviously like the uh, Muppet version. I like the Muppet version too. I appreciate that we didn't leave the Muppet version out. Yeah. Um, yeah. But Mickey Mouse Christmas Carol is my favorite. Yes, Mickey Mouse uh, yeah. Christmas Carol. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's always been my yep. favorite. Since yeah. I, I get was like so seven. excited when I see yes. it. It's so weird because I know we only got a couple minutes left, but the do you remember when you were young watching that? I think it was like this featured length full film. Like yes, it was I am glad Mickey, somebody else yes. felt that. Yes, Mickey Mouse. and now we watch it. It's like five minutes long. Yes, it is. It's extremely short and disappointing. And I think it's a and lot it's of it's because we length. watch it like on streaming where there's no commercials. Yep. Right before you before this, there was like five com- like five ten minutes of commercials every five minutes. Yep. So I think that and plus we were like my mom was always baking cookies and we were yep. like, being festive and Just now everything's streamed. Good. It's like there and it's like ten minutes long. I'm like I feel like kind of yep. 
You know, I have I to admit, to, sometimes don't I don't forward through the commercials. I got stuff I got to do during those. Yeah, true. That's right? Tough. Yeah. <laughs> Grab a snack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Another warm Pepsi. <laughs> like, you know, the kids today, they're not going to know any of this stuff. <laughs> right? It's all streaming. They don't know how to get their yeah. drinks. We watched ours on VHS. I remember we yep. recorded it once. I was at my Christmas program. I don't know how I remember that. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we watched the heck out of that tape. I, I get excited. I, I have to. I'm wondering, is it on Disney Plus now? Is that where I have to go? I'm sure it is. For which one? Oh, oh yeah, it's on Disney Christmas. Plus. Yeah, it is. I'm gonna have to get it yeah. just for that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But all right, crypto heads, it's uh, been a great, uh, great show tonight. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good time. Again, thank you for the uh, to the uh, Destination Fear crew for coming on. Um, it was great talking to Dakota, Tanner, and Chelsea. Um, really cool. Cool interview, Aaron. Thank you for coming on. No, thanks for having me, Goose and, uh, and Michael. Yep. Thank you for joining the team. You definitely added a, an awesome element to I the appreciate team. Appreciate that. And I'll keep you guys all up to date on my miserly and jerkish yes, behavior. Yes, we'll see if that he has an experience <laughs> where he connects with one of the three the three ghosts of Christmas. Hopefully, not Jacob Marley. I was going to say, four. Four <laughs> Jacob, yeah, right? true, true. Yeah, Jacob Marley. He was. Even in all of them, he was a little bit freaky. Right. Yeah. Except when he was goofy. Yeah, yeah well, Goofy's goofy. <laughs> all right, well, I hate to cut you yep. guys off, but we got to get off before the Dave and Dave show comes on. So we will spook you later, Crypto Heads. Uh, next week, uh, no special guests lined up, but I am trying to get a group of friends in here. It's going to have a good old-fashioned uh, little Christmas get-together, um, just talk about ghosts, and maybe we'll talk more about the uh, Christmas carol and what ghosts we want to want to visit. I think it's a good topic for conversation. I went all four. <laughs> Damn, you son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bah humbug. All right, kids. That, that's, we'll, that's what I got to say more. <laughs> yes. We will spook you later, Crypto Heads. Again, thank you for watching and stay tuned next week. Bye. 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 Hello everyone, I'm the Goose. And I'm Michael Bradley. Is that what you're calling yourself tonight? Heisenberg. Not the angry kitty. Max Braggins. <laughs> Anywho, we're the hosts of the Cryptic Paranormal Show. On our show, we'll talk about all things paranormal except Bigfoot, he freaks me out. Really, dude? You know that, but I mean, I guess we could talk about him as long as I don't have to see him. <laughs> we will talk. As a matter of fact, we'll talk about all fields in the paranormal realm. And every week we will interview new guests, celebrities, and researchers in the field, and all our comrades in the paranormal underground. And we aren't afraid to ask the hard questions no one else will. Our conversations are rooted in our own experiences as paranormal investigators. So be prepared to have your minds, your opinions, and your beliefs challenged. And let's not forget to warn them about all the tomfoolery and shenanigans. Let's just say, you might want to put the kiddos to bed before tuning in. They don't call us the paranormal shock jocks for nothing. Do they call us that? If they don't, you will. So be sure to tune into the Cryptic Paranormal Show every Thursday night from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on RU Media Network. Spook you later, Crypto Heads. Bye. Shut up. <laughs>